profit there. So this was over, this this itself was over well over a thousand because of the calls. And then this one we bought as a, as an ETF, so it was about five hundred or so. And then this one was four hundred. So altogether about two thousand. Uh, since this welcome back. This is a market analysis of Bitcoin, uh, as well as the major stock market indices S and P five hundred. Nasdaq, Russell, and Dow Jones. So let's get right into it. With the Bitcoins, we had a pullback last time. I, I pointed out this downtrend line um, at the time. I think it's, let's see. Actually, I think it should be moved up just a little bit like this. Yeah, a little bit like that. And so if you zoom in, basically what we have since then we had this uh, from 60, around 6,500-ish. 6, we broke over that trend line. And at that time, I was saying that, it, you know, at the time it was like 8,200, 8,300 in, in one of the, the previous posts. And I said, if we could pull back and re-back test this downtrend line to around like 7,500, that would be like an optimal so, uh, buy point. And uh, it didn't pull back quite as far. So it only pulled back to like 70. Uh, what is this? Um, just like seventy nine hundred, and then it and it went five, five up. So basically, what you have here, you has uh, one, two, three, four, five, four. Uh, so you have an A, B, one, two, and then this three is a one, two, three, four, five, three, and then a four, and then this five is just truncated. So what do we have since that five? We have this triangle form, and then a pop up. So that yeah, you, you could count that as an A, B, one. Right, so this is a one, two, three, four, five, one, and then this is a two, this is a three, this is a four, and this is a five. All right, so what happens after a five? And that five just exceeded the top of three, right? Just below uh, ten thousand, and we see that resistance also at ninety eight hundred. Now, from this ninety eight hundred region, where is the support? Well, you have support in this kind of eighty eight hundred region. Uh, you have support in this 8500 region, but it looks like we passed those areas. Um, and we didn't really, we saw a bounce here at 8300, um, but it failed to kind of get over this blue line here. And so right now what we have is potentially a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, ABC 4, and then a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth wave. So if you look at this as a as a one, this could be a two in which the wave two has a one, two, three, four, five formation. So if that's the case, we have a one, two, three, four, five, five up, and the one, two, three, four, five, five down, then what naturally would happen is at least for the next, you know, into June, there should be um, uh, some kind of rally in into June. Right? So right now, um, it's, now it's possible that this could be an A, B, one, two, three, four, and there's there's further lower to go, in which case we could retest that 7,500 region uh, that I said was uh, you know would be an ideal buy point. Uh, but uh, it looks like we do have five. Um, I'm leaning towards that as being five, and so we'll see. Right now we we have some kind of reaction off of it, but then again we had some kind of reaction off of it here. So now it's just a matter of whether the market actually wants to pull up further. All right. So that's the that's a look at Bitcoin. Um, we're off the downtrend line. We're kind of pulling back. Um, and so uh, we did find a, a local bottom around 90, 7,900, which was similar to that 7,900 last time. So if that breaks, 7,500 would be the next uh, ideal level. Um, otherwise, if this were to go forward, I would, I would it would have to show a lot of green candles going into end of June in order for that to be true. So that's the analysis for Bitcoin. And if we look at the S&P 500, um, so you can kind of, uh, you know, let, let's take a look at this draw, like, a, you know, if you were to take this, all right, that's a square. It's, let me get a, uh, uh, let me get a line. All right, so you, you draw from around here draw there and you see how it kind of popped over this downtrend line and then back tested it right so actually um let me uh, zoom in a little bit here all right so there you go all right so if we take that same 
tool and we draw a straight line, right? What a, what a coincidence, right? So it, it basically rallied just above it, pulled back, and now the question is, is this is this rolling over, right? So we have two red days, um, actually three red days since hitting this area. And if you look at all the, I mean, let's take a look at all the previous um, kind of, uh, you know, pull downs. We had this pull down, we had this pull down, we had this pull down, and this pull down, this pull down. Now each of the cases, it had a series green of, of green uh, daily candles going into it. And then you would have uh, two, you know, it looks like two consecutive rare candles. And then it couldn't get anywhere and then it went further, right? So this one, you, it, it had a red candle and then the next day it just couldn't be green and it just pulled back down. This one, it couldn't be green, pulled down, right? This one, pulled down, couldn't be green, pulled down, All right? So the question is, this one did post a green candle here, right? So, and it did back back test this area. So there's support in this 2700 region, maybe just, you know, it could possibly uh, retest the 2780 region even. Um, but it looks like, uh, m you know, my my hunch is that this could pull down a little bit lower and uh, there should be, you know, if this is like a one and this is a two and this is a three, then this would be an A, B, C, four. The question is whether that four will end higher than 2700 or below it. All right. So I right now it looks like it's an A, B, C and it, there should be. All right. So this is a uh, this is a daily chart. So there should be some kind of um, one, you know, some kind of fifth wave up that would hit resistance around this 2750, 2745 region, All right? So that would be my best guess scenario. Um, but it's also possible that we, that we roll down from here, in which case you have an A, B, C, uh, and then followed by an A, B, C, A, A, B, C, B, and then this one, two, three, four, and then maybe like a truncated fifth and then it rolls, rolls over. All right, so that's the, S and P 500, um, and oftentimes you want to look at the other indices. So if that's S and P 500, you take a look at Nasdaq. Uh, the Nasdaq chart could be a little bit different. All right, so we have the Nasdaq chart. All right, so this is Nasdaq, and so notice that the A B C resulted in a higher B wave. The C was higher than the end of A. So that's generally a, a bullish sign. We have this kind of like a a wave A B, and then one two three, and I would hope to be some kind of fourth here, and then a fifth wave that would go just above seven thousand before possibly pulling back down. Um, and so that's my hunch right now. If you look at all the other pullbacks. You had two red candles in a row. Two red candles, two red candles, and uh, this was two red candles. Even this one that had two red candles uh, ended up being able to bounce and then pull back further down. So if that if this is kind of the ABC, I, I would expect this ABC to be something similar. Uh, and let's let's zoom in for a little bit more clue, right? So you zoom in. So if this was the A, and this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, then this could be like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C, or this could be, this C is already at an A, B, C, and then this would be some kind of consolidation pattern. So th there's some kind of support in this in this region. I don't know if it pulls back down here, um, but if it does, uh, I would say potentially look for some maybe a one or two day rally towards this region. And I would say this region, there's a lot of sellers. Uh, so uh, that's the NASDAQ. Now, know the Russell. The Russell has actually been making uh, an all time high, right? So it's a little bit different. And and we talked about, um, if we, let's look at the, the daily chart and I'll zoom out a little bit. And remember this, this February uh, big drop, 
and we actually erase completely this entire drop. All right, so this this uh, entire drop was was erased, and we're actually at all time highs higher than that. So the question is, if this is an A, B, C, you know, A, B, one, two, um, and this could be this could be a failed third, in which case we'd pull back down. And uh, I do, however, with the Russell, given how bullish it is, I do see this kind of um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell here, but it does. It, I mean, it is the most bullish of all the charts. Um, so it's it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, but let's uh, just just note that I wouldn't. I would want to see the other indices roll over before I would short the Russell. Uh, so what about the Dow? Uh, let's see. Now the Dow. We did that exercise of, of that downtrend line before, and we had this, right? Uh, maybe you want to draw it like this. All right, so whether, whatever the case is, it broke that downtrend line. And the question is, sometimes you could just exceed it and back test it. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm expecting this. Right now we're in consolidation pattern. We could reach up towards twenty five thousand and pull back down. Uh, in terms of where uh, support is, there's support in this region. There's support where it intersected this downtrend line. So there's support in this region. In terms of resistance, uh, I would say you know this region, just over over twenty five thousand, and and so like I would say there there shouldn't be too much room on the upside uh, so there's a lot of resistance above 25,000 so right now it's a matter of does it go here first or does it go there first uh, so that's the the Dow Jones industrial average uh, futures now in terms of uh, member alerts uh, with the Nasdaq uh, we were actually uh, bullish the Nasdaq and I can show you some of the some of the rallies that we were able to capture all right so here's a chart of the nasdaq and uh, you could see it pulled back we were bullish on the nasdaq here but it pulled back here to 65.50 and we had to uh you know we weren't sure if it was going to you know uh crash or anything like that so we we exited here uh at a loss initially and um you could see we sold out of our queues may 11th 163.5 calls at uh, 10 40 in the morning uh, that was uh, around here somewhere. And then the next day, so the next day on May 4th, that is May 4th here, right the bottom here as it was just about moving up, we were able to issue uh, a, a call option uh, buy um, here. And then we were able to exit half of it uh, after it rallied and exit on uh, the other half basically by by the end of the day so within this one day we were able to make up the loss from this and we also held on to the following week we added a uh so 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 we that was over a thousand dollar position and um then you know then on may uh what is this may may 8th uh we were we bought uh here we bought uh on this dip we bought uh triple q's and we rode this up until the 11th and that's basically here so we rode this from here 8th to the 11th and so that was the triple q's and then on the following tuesday which is this is monday this is tuesday so right here we bought uh, uh, SPY calls. Uh, so that we got to switch over to the S&P 500 chart. We bought uh, SPY calls here, and we sold them. That was on the fifth. That was on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday at around noon, we sold 
out of it. So we basically bought here, we sold here, and uh, was able to you know exit at a four hundred dollar profit there. So this was over. This this itself was over well over a thousand because of the calls, and then this one we bought as a, as an ETF, so it was about five hundred or so, and then this one was four hundred. So altogether about two thousand uh, since this rally. So now the question is, where does the S and P five hundred go? Right? Does it does it go towards support? Does it roll over, or does it do one more thing and then roller? Uh, so that's basically the, the the big question mark. And uh, I was I was hoping this would be like a one two three four five in ABC here and but the thing is this you know there's some kind of lack of clarity uh, going into the weekend uh, one thing that's important to note though I next weekend is a three-day weekend right you, you have Memorial weekend uh, around the 25th uh, or so and usually the market doesn't crash into the three-day weekend right so um, I it's there have been cases where it was crashing and and it, but then like two days before the three day weekend it would reverse. So that's just something to keep in mind. So in case we do pull back in the earlier parts of the week, uh, I don't, I, I would not expect it to crash into the weekend. So that's basically my perspective uh, right now. Um, we 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 should be in a consolidation fourth wave pattern uh, with one more fifth wave toward twenty seven fifty. The question is, where does it find support? If it fails, then it's possible that we retest the lows, um, or, you know, below 2,600. So that's the update uh, for this weekend, and I'll see you guys next time.